So built in 1093, welcome to the Cathedral Church of Christ. Blessed Mary the Virgin and St Cuthbert of Durham, better known as the Durham Cathedral. So it took almost four decades to build and it stood for almost 900 years. It's been the site of miracles, mass slaughter and buried treasure. All of which ensured it was one of the very first UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the UK. And looking behind us you can understand why. A place I've been coming to since I was a child. We only live 10 miles away from the cathedral and no matter how many times I come my mind is always completely blown by what I see. So we're going to have a good look round inside. We're going to hear some of the stories, some of the miracles and some of the happenings that have gone on over the last 900 years and we're going to have a walk up the 329 steps all the way to the top of the tower. So the cathedral itself holds uh, many religious relics including St Cuthbert who was transported here from Lindisfarne by monks from the Holy Island in the 800s. We've also got St Oswald's head here and also the remains of the Venerable Bede. sanctuary knocker who was deliberately made to look as gruesome as it is to ward off evil so the cathedral is also a place of sanctuary if anybody had committed a crime no matter how heinous whether it was murder rape adultery if they made it the cathedral and touched the cathedral knocker they were granted 37 days sanctuary within the cathedral and nobody could touch them within that 37 days they could make amends with the person they had wronged. If that had happened, all was well. If they couldn't make amends, they were banished from the cathedral and the kingdom forever. How, how amazing is that? It's a Turin artwork called Gaia, which represents the earth from outer space photographs from provided by NASA and it's shown the earth in 3D what an absolutely magnificent sight oh, these stained glass windows always absolutely fascinate me St Cuthbert which was constantly moved all around the north of England to stop it falling into the hands of the Vikings and when it eventually came to Durham they found it couldn't be moved so they decided this would be the place that it would stop. Durham itself is a very well protected it has a river on three parts acting as a natural moat and the one way up to the cathedral is very very steep and very very easy to defend but the initial structure would have been very very basic but to get to what we see today that took almost 36 years and supposedly over 1000 stonemasons worked continually over that period when you consider this was 900 years ago and this is what they created. So 
so pilgrims came from all over the world to worship at the shrine of St Cuthbert's bringing gold, silver, jewels, works of art it became a very lucrative business for the monks of Durham Cathedral the more people came more stories of miracles and healing which in turn brought more pilgrims so in 1538 during the dissolution of the monasteries St Cuthbert's tomb was ordered to be destroyed by King Henry VIII so the shrine itself was covered in gold silver and jewels and the knights that Henry VIII sent took all these things they also broke into the coffin itself expecting to find a pile of bones what they actually found was a completely uncorrupted whole body of St Cuthbert so when Henry heard of this he was so amazed he allowed the monks to, to rebury the body of St Cuthbert and also the monks were allowed to stop at the cathedral if you're watching the Harry Potter films you should recognize this parts of at least two of the films were filmed here at Durham Cathedral the cathedral itself is 66 meters high and at the time it was the tallest building in the whole world and when you consider at that time most people lived in little one-story hovels but just imagine what the people thought when they saw this structure rising and rising it must have been an absolutely awe-inspiring sight <laughs> carving of uh, Jesus after his crucifixion with his mother Mary and then laid out before his resurrection <laughs> so a history of the bishops priors and deans of Durham Cathedral from 995 all the way down to the present so around about halfway up there now you do need to be reasonably fit to get up here and now that we've got half of up the stairs are getting smaller and the, the room you've got to walk up in is getting tighter as well and you can see how the stone has been worn away over the centuries with people walking up and down these steps and hopefully I'm not going to need that but one thing if you're interested the cathedral I'm looking for new bell ringers and over the years you can see graffiti that has been left here so I'm just on the quick breather here looking out the fabulous view but I can't wait to get to the top for the even better view again more graffiti on the, the door from over the years and congratulations for conquering the towers 325 steps and it took me 11 minutes to get over here uh, with one break so now we are up here this is the view that we're getting a lot of health and safety uh, involved there now that didn't used to be involved and I am sure that you used to be able to look down onto Franklin prison which is a category A prison in Durham that houses some of the most notorious uh, gangsters 
and criminals and murderers with I can think of the Moors murderers, the Cray twins and many many others have all served time at Her Majesty's Prison Franklin. Oh, very nice to have met them and I hope they have an absolutely fantastic time. But one thing with all the going round and round and round, when you do stop, my head was spinning. So if you're going to come up here, I would suggest taking plenty of stops on the way up. <laughs> Over the centuries, the knees of worshippers have worn the shrine down to the smooth surface that we see today. Cromwell used the cathedral to house over 500 Scottish prisoners of war after the Battle of Dunbar. So you can imagine at the end of a battle, the prisoners, what state they would be in. Most of them would be injured, a lot of them would be seriously injured, yet they were force marched all the way down from Scotland, all the way down to Durham Cathedral. And on the way down, over 2,000 of the prisoners died with the rest of them being locked up inside the cathedral half the prisoners that were here were transported over to america the others suffered really harsh conditions in 2013 two mass graves were discovered during building work at the cathedral and carbon dating from the bones were able to prove that they were all young teenage Scottish boy soldiers. absolutely love when I walk around a place like this is the old stained glass windows absolutely fantastic there's one there in particular that I really I like it's quite a modern one and it de depicts airmen from World War II because it was in World War II that Adolf Hitler ordered the Luftwaffe to bomb England's historical and cultural treasures including Durham Cathedral so on the 1st of May 1942, the Luftwaffe came over the coast to England and 38 German bombers were sighted heading towards Durham Cathedral on a perfectly clear night. Full moon, perfect bombing conditions. Just before they got there, all of a sudden a mist appeared and it completely circled Durham Cathedral. They end up bombing the nearby deserted Finchley Abbey. So another miracle attributed to St Cuthbert. So it is actually free entry to get into Durham Cathedral. They do ask for a donation because it costs three million pound every year to upkeep the cathedral, which works out something like about sixty thousand pound a week. So whether you're a religious person or not. I can thoroughly recommend a visit to Durham Cathedral. So if you enjoyed the video, I really would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up 
I say so it won't be too long before I'm back out again. Cheers. <laughs>